Uh, you know, they say the British know how to keep a stiff upper lip, but judging from some commercials from the United Kingdom, they like a good guffaw now and then as well. An American ad agency has put together a salute to British television advertising. CNN's Chris Chase takes a look at some of their best commercials. Don't walk, boogie. What I think they do more in England than they are doing at the moment is to uh, tease the audience into not being quite sure what this piece of film is that you're looking at. And they will reveal what the product is, and they will re reveal the selling proposition of the product uh, slowly, so that you are drawn into the commercials. British-born Peter Whitelam is creative director of a small New York-based ad agency called Parkson. Recently, he helped put together a salute to British advertising for New York's Museum of Modern Art. Mr. Whitelam says the British don't treat consumers like morons. And like your new dog art, right? Hey, boy. Boop, boop. Down. Sit. Heel. Couldn't do much, does he? Fancy a drop of John Smith's. <laughs> He just needs the right motivation. John Smith's bitter, a tough act to follow. Okay, beautiful. Thank you, thank you, madam. I only offered you a little nibble. They're all at it, munching new hanky-panky from Pasco. Mind you, with those crunchy peanuts and those crispy corn puffs coated with all that caramel. It's a right good nibble. You'll never know how good it is until you try it. I mean, we all like a bit of hanky-panky oh, now and again, don't we? Going to get a hundred matches in a box. matches in a box! It's no good! I can't stand it! Close the box! Close the box! Uh, Close the box. Uh, let me uh, out! Let me out! <laughs> This'll cure your claustrophobia. I think we're on to a couple of winners here. <laughs> What's your name then? Sparky. Get <laughs> <laughs> a room on top, Sparky. <laughs> More British ads next time. Chris J. CNN Media Watch. Hi, I'm Chris Chase, and this is the weekend edition of Media Watch. Today, another mini special, mostly about TV commercials from England, spiced with a few from France. This is one way to sell records. Suddenly, everybody's dancing to a new beat. Two, four, six, eight. It's the disco beat. Just me and my radio turn on What I think they do more in England than they are doing at the moment is to uh, tease the audience into not being quite sure what this piece of film is that you're looking at. And they will reveal what the product is, and they will re reveal the selling proposition of the product uh, slowly, so that you are drawn into the commercials. Here, there are all sorts of little rules that somehow along the line have been put into effect, like you must mention the name of the product in the first few seconds, you must show the product in the first five seconds. And all these things tend to make the advertising hidebound, very stultified. British-born Peter Whitelam is creative director of a small New York-based ad agency called Parkson. Recently, he helped put together a salute to British advertising for New York's Museum of Modern Art. Mr. Whitelam says the British don't treat consumers like morons, and the award-winning commercials he made available to us would seem to prove his point. They push snacks, bran flakes, tissues, safety matches, and tonic water. They tempt an old dog to do new tricks by giving him a saucer of beer. And always, the best British ads have real style. Take a look. Like your new dog art, right? Hey, boy. Boop, boop. Down. Sit. Heel. 
can do much, does he? Fancy a drop of John Smith's? <laughs> He just needs the right motivation. John Smith's bitter. A tough act to follow. Be careful, little hanky panky, madam. I only offered you a little nibble. Now, all at it, munching new hanky-panky from Pascal. Mind you, with those crunchy peanuts and those crispy corn puffs coated with all that caramel. It's a right good nibble. You'll never know how good it is until you try it. I mean, we all like a bit of hanky-panky oh, now and again, don't we? <laughs> After breakfast, the town mouse said, that wheat and bran was simply topping. And might I take a little home? Oh, I shall do better than that, said the country mouse. Here you be. Kellogg's 30% bran flakes. Wheat, extra bran, enriched with iron. Sure you can carry it all? No trouble, said the town mouse. I'll just make it a bit lighter. Wanna make an issue with a certain kind of tissue? One that comes in handy all the time. Always fresh and neat, always looks a treat. Not just saying that to make it rhyme. Tens of many others everywhere you go. You never know when you'll have a nose to blow. Nose to blow, nose to blow. New Handy Andes now come in even handier packs of ten, so they're not just soft and thick, they stay fresh and clean too. Keeps them handy, 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 keeps them handy, handy. Close the box, close the box. No, there's enough of it uh, in here. Please what do you think we are? Down. Take the wood They're going something. to get a hundred matches in a box. matches in a box! It's no good! I can't stand it! Close the box, close the box! Uh, close. Let me out, let me out! <laughs> This'll cure your claustrophobia. I think we're on to a couple of winners here. <laughs> What's your name then? Sparky. <laughs> When you've got a hundred matches in a box, you've got a box of winners. Mr. Rawlings, your majesty. Your majesty, Mr. Rawlings. Oh. <coughs> your majesty. Mr. Rawlings, we find your tonic water most refreshing, and we have today ordered another bottle. Thank you very much, ma'am. We are intrigued, Mr. Rawlings as to why it is called Indian tonic water. Tenderly, why do we call it Indian tonic water? Why not? I regret, ma'am, but of necessity that must remain a trade secret. She was not amused. Many English commercial makers went on to be movie directors. Hugh Hudson, who did Chariots of Fire, Ridley Scott, who did Alien, his brother Tony, who made The Hunger, Peter Whitelam talks about the Scots' new way of techniques. Ridley and Tony Scott, um, are, their background was really was, has been very heavily visual. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at a film like The Hunger, or if you look at something like Blade Runner, which is graphically an extraordinary film, or Alien, you'll see that, that uh, what they're doing is it, the, the image in the camera is fantastic. Um, people sometimes, and this is a criticism that I'm not alone in saying this, the people sometimes tend to be props right. in the scene. Here's Tony Scott using people as props to sell jeans. I wear my jeans to fit my body. I wear my body under my jeans. I wear my jeans like a second skin. And it's through the jeans that I'm in. Scott's mini-drama for Benson and Hedges is very different. The man trying to buy himself an escape from Singapore is much more than a prop.
movie houses, English audiences are not spared commercials. Does this bother them? No, and for, a, for an advertiser, it's fantastic because he's got really a captive audience. They can't turn the TV dial. They can't go out to the bathroom. They are stuck in the cinema, and it really is a kind of a captive audience. Not many people would mind being captive to a commercial in which tea-drinking chimps, the tea comes in big bags, are robbing a safe. Pass the black bag, grotty old son. I only brought the big bags. Why don't you sit down and rest your brain? You blow me. Oh, when a good me. cup of tea really counts, a PG Tips big bag gives the tea more room to move around, so you get more flavor in the pot for tea you can really taste. Lovely. Right, now we'd better leave for the airport. How many big bags have you, sir? 144. More commercials from abroad when we come back after these commercials from America. We're back looking at British TV advertising. Even the public service spots are done with imagination. Sorry, no vacancy. It's not much of a game being young and unemployed. No experience. No oh. qualifications. No experience. No qualifications. Being no shunted experience. from pillar to post. No knowing you're one of the thousands who can't find work. There is a way out. The Youth Opportunities Program <laughs> is a way to get the work experience, training and references that could help you to a permanent job. You'd have to be a fool to agree to be a human cannonball, fired at 30 miles per hour head first into a sheet of glass. And yet, that's just the risk you take every time you drive around town without wearing your seatbelt. Because that's when most accidents happen. On short trips at 30 miles per hour or less. Especially on a short trip. Clunk, click. The English find German accents amusing, as you'll see in the following beer commercial and car commercial. In the English language, I have to crash in course so to make more better understanding to host and export by blue. Here, out of Bavaria, is many hops for especially the brewing of the extremely quality Holsten. Mmm. Nice in the throat immediately. So, to the ceiling for celebrations for a very pleased Tommy when the Holsten is down, yeah? Yeah. We must examine the British character to understand their cars. The bowler hat is worn at all times, so headroom is essential. At weekends, the English chase the fox and shoot the grouse. For this, their cars must be sporty. Usually, the British drive on the left, with one or two exceptions. Every year, the British display themselves at a ceremony called Ascot, where horses and many curious costumes can be observed. Scotsmen are very attached to the skirt or kilt, also to money. So economy is important. Even some regional English accents can strain an American ear. This old chap doesn't want his company to change the way it bakes bread. Would you credit it? Fifty odd years of baking same old Orvis. No top brass at Orvis tell me they want an alternative. Still with the same wheat germ goodness, but a bit softer like and less crusty. I told them I'm too old to change my ways now. I'll put one at lights onto it. Very nice, young Harold. If you like that sort of thing. The English are not afraid to use humor, whether they're selling the prestigious London Times or a deep fryer for the lowly fish and chips. Excuse me, Colonel. There's a present for you outside, sir. A present, Sergeant? Yes, sir. A great big horse, sir. Sergeant, I believe I already own the biggest horse in the regiment. This is a very big horse, sir. Eighty foot high, wooden, on wheels. It's got a label on, sir. It says, to the Trojans, with love, from the creeks. I say, how sporting of them. <laughs> well, you know what to do, Sergeant. Sir? Wheel it in, man. Wheel it in. Have you ever wished you were better informed? <laughs> Have you ever wished you read the Times? Well, I told Harris. I saw a little care. I chips tonight, John. Uh, with, uh, good luck. Thank you. I'm hungry. Oh, hello, darling. Thank you. At last, the friar with its own little gas mask. I personally think that the difference between advertising there and here has got to do with the audience. The British audience can actually look forward to its commercial breaks. 
because they're going to have some marvelous things to look at. Uh, the American audience is now so fed up with advertising and they've seen every possible cliche they can with it that it's, and it's so rare that a, that a very unusual commercial like a Federal Express or a British Airways comes up. So rare that that happens that it's a jaded group that you're talking to here. Sometimes, as in this commercial for windsurfing equipment, the English don't even use words. country with soft cell. Sometimes the French don't use the spoken word either, but they say it with music, as in these ads for bathing suits, frozen souffles, and mattresses. Chaque nuit, les matins blâmes, c'est fini. Tu te réveilles fringante, un moral épatant. Tu démarres du bon pied pour une bonne journée. Mérinos, Mérinos, Mérinos. Bon, bah, ce soir. See you again in two weeks with another weekend edition of Media Watch. Chris Chase, CNN, New York.